Well, I took advantage of the fact my youngest was at his father's and decided to take a nap after I clocked out of work just to wake up to brand new documents. We have a state's response to Brian Koberger's defense team's supplemental request for discovery. Finally, let's go over it. Hey guys, this is Jules with True Crime Reactions. You're gonna see the headset. My neighbor's kids are on a very loud bike thing outside in the gravel, and so I figured headset would probably be the best way to do this. And noticed we had these new states response. Now there's two of them. This first one is only three pages long, but there's some verbiage in here that I think we should definitely go over because this entire time, We've basically been under the assumption that the prosecution side of the Idaho case is not supplying the defendant side with all of the evidence. It looks like they've actually given them quite a bit to go over already. Let's go ahead and talk about what this says. Come now the state of Idaho by and through the Latah County prosecuting attorney submits the following response to defendant's third supplemental request for discovery. The state incorporates its January 23rd, 23 states response to request for discovery, February 21st, 23 states response to defendant's first supplemental request for discovery, and March 29th, 2023 states response to defendant's second supplemental request for discovery, as is fully set forth at this point. The state has and will continue to provide discovery in accordance to ICR 16 and applicable law. In regards to the specific request for standard lab discovery, the state has already provided the defense with everything it has received from the FBI lab. The state has also provided the defense with approximately 30 reports from the Idaho State Police Lab. The state has provided the Idaho State Police Lab with a copy of the defense's standard lab discovery comprised of paragraphs 1 through 10 and will supplement discovery as appropriate. The state specifically objects to the request for personnel related information as outside the scope of ICR unless and to the extent that lab personnel will be offering expert testimony which is discoverable. Okay, so in the request, we saw that Ann Taylor was asking for like emails, text messages, resumes, performance evaluations, very detailed information about the lab personnel. And they're stating here that unless somebody that worked on the case is going to be brought in as testimony in court, that person's information would be the only one that they would allow all of these details for. But until someone is named as a witness, for the expert testimony, they're not gonna be giving any of that information over. Then it states, in regard to the defense's request for genetic genealogy testing and search, the state objects and intends to separately file a motion in Lamine and a motion for protective order under ICR 16, as will be more fully detailed in said motion. The state believes that the defendant's requested discovery is outside the scope of ICR and in that it does not tend to negate the guilt of the accused as to the offense charged or tend to reduce punishment for the offenses as contemplated by ICR. It is not relevant. It is not material to the preparation of the defense. It is not intended for use by the state as evidence at trial and none of the documentation being sought belongs to the defendant. Genetic genealogy research does not constitute reports of examination or test, and any genetic genealogy research was exempt from the disclosure under ICR. So, okay, is this basically stating that any of the genealogy stuff done is completely irrelevant to the case, and therefore the defendant doesn't need it? I'm really trying to understand this paragraph because this is, to me, making it seem like that. Like the genealogy paperwork, all of the testing, all of the search results is going to be completely irrelevant. So then what we're hearing about the knife sheath, is it true? This is confusing, guys. I, mm, we got to figure out what this means here because this is odd to me. 
Now this second filing that went along with this is about five pages long and it basically lists out everything that the prosecution is stating they've already given to the defense side. So let's go ahead and go through that. It states, by way of background, as of the date of this response, the state has provided the following discovery to the defendant. Approximately 10,000 pages of reports and other written materials, approximately 10,200 photographs, approximately 9,200 tips, and approximately 51 terabytes. Holy crap. That's a lot. 51 terabytes of audio, video, media, and digital materials. Wow, that is a lot. Then it states, the state has disclosed all items it is aware of relating to the search and arrest of Brian Koberger in Pennsylvania. The state is unaware of any body cam or dash cam footage beyond what has been disclosed and on information and belief understands there is no body cam footage. Recordings of interviews and the defendant's transportation from the scene of arrest have also been provided. Numerous lab reports regarding forensic evidence collection and analysis of items recovered from the defendant's parents' home, trash cans, and other receptacles, and defendant's vehicle have been disclosed to the defendant. These reports include items from the FBI laboratory in Quantico, Virginia, as well as the Idaho State Police Lab. The defendant's attorneys and investigators have also been given direct access to view and inspect items seized from his parents' residence, including his vehicle. The state will continue to disclose additional reports it receives that are subject to discovery under ICR 16 and applicable by case law. To the extent that the defense believes that certain reports may contain exculpatory information, the state asks that the defense specify what exculpatory information they are referring to and the basis for their belief so as to enable the state to make an appropriate additional inquiries. So they want to know what exactly did the defense thinks that the prosecution has that could be labeled as exculpatory information. That's interesting. Regarding the defendant's request labeled 2A, in addition to the above response, the state has inquired for the defense for clarification on ISP lab reports by number, since there is a question about some duplicate numbering of the initial lab reports. ISP lab reports are separately numbered by forensic biology, DNA, prints, and forensic field services. The state has already been able to advise defense counsel that there is an ISP lab report 25, which has been discovered, and there was another ISP lab report 11, which is pending review and approval at the lab. So there's something that's still being tested that they're waiting for? To assist the parties, the state has initiated specific inquiries about the status of all ISP lab reports and will make discovery to defense as appropriate. The state has provided recordings of MPD Detective Payne's interview with Mr. Koberger to the defense. Okay, so here it's being labeled as an interview. In the other documents, it's being labeled as an interrogation. So he would have already had been back in Idaho and obviously assigned Ann Taylor already. And if it's just an interview, that means he agreed to it? I don't... Okay, the state will provide any related reports and or notes that are received and reviewed. As with item number one above, the state has provided the defense with reports, audio, video, and other recordings relating to the defendant's arrest and incarceration in Pennsylvania that have been received by the state. The state has provided a copy of the report slash memo referred to as request number 161 to the defendant. The state is unaware of any notes, recordings, or photographs. I guess that means about Pennsylvania. The state respectfully submits that training records of blank, blank, blank specific officers are outside the scope of ICR 16 and unless to extend that the officers, same thing. So unless there's a specific cop that's going to be giving expert testimony at any of the trials, then all of the same information that's being requested about the lab people, the defense isn't getting it about the officers either. Which is interesting considering that we do have like Brady Giglio situations happening. So why wouldn't they just be like, well, we're just going to go ahead and give it all to them then since we already have this Brady Giglio situation that's having an issue with this case. 
Anyway, it just the way things are being done in this case is just so stupid in my opinion. And then it states, in the event of such a showing, in the event that an officer is called in for expert testimony and his information, his or her information has to be added to the court record, they ask for a protective order in order to protect the confidentiality of the personnel records. And then it just states that they will continue to give discovery over to the defense as they get it. So, I mean, it is a lot of stuff, it seems, that they have given over to the defense. But I'm wondering why we're even having this motion then. Or maybe now the motion that's filed on the 22nd to compel discovery is going to be canceled because they have this. I'm still stuck on that last paragraph. I'm going to reread this. And I really want you guys to help me figure out if I'm interpreting this right. In regard to the defense's request for genetic genealogy testing and search, the state objects and intends to separately file a motion in Lamine and motion for protective order under ICR-16. Well, first off, what the hell does that mean? What is a motion in Lamine? That's what I don't do. Motion in Lamine, meaning. Okay, it says... In U.S. law, a motion in Lamine is a motion discussed outside the presence of the jury to request that certain testimony be excluded. So right here again, I was right. Like, just like in the beginning that we've been stating, why would they have asked specifically for the DNA on the sheets to not have been included in any of the warrants, either the arrest or the search warrant, but they still felt the need to tell us about it? This is literally stating that even though they have the DNA... They are admitting they have the DNA. They are going to file a motion for it to be excluded. That doesn't make sense to me because, honestly, even though the touch DNA is so unreliable, it's the only thing they have that actually concretely puts him in the house. So for them to be sitting here and stating, oh, we're not going to give you any of that, we're going to exclude it, why is it even in the warrants to begin with? As will be more fully detailed in said motion, the state believes that the defendant's requested discovery is outside the scope of ICR. So the defendant wanting information on the genealogy test that was done that proved his blood was on the sheath or his DNA was on the sheath at the crime scene is outside the scope of these laws. How is that a thing? It does not tend to negate the guilt of the accused as to the offense charged or tend to reduce punishment for the offenses as contemplated by ICR. Well, no, it wouldn't reduce any punishment because it's the only thing that actually puts him in the house. It is not relevant. It is not material to the preparation of the defense. How is them having his DNA on the sheath in the middle of a bloody crime scene not relevant or material needed for preparation of the defense? Can someone please explain to me? <laughs> How that's not something that the defendant should be trying to figure out? It is not intended for use by the state as evidence at trial and none of the documentation being sought belongs. So I'm right, basically. It does state they're going to just completely exclude any of the genealogy testing. So another thing we were talking about with this was that they stated they took his trash from his dad's trash can, the trash from his dad's house, on the 27th and somehow were able to get it all the way over 2,500 miles away back to the Idaho State Lab to have it tested and all that testing completed and everything by the 28th? Less than 24 hours? How the hell are they supposed to make us believe that that's the case? And now we see here that they are fighting everything they can to not have to give this information over because they're not going to use it in court? Throw the whole case out. I'm done. <laughs>